Hey everybody, I am Ryan Sykes. And I'm Ryan's brother Paul, and today we are going to talk about seasons of Survivor you should actually watch. Ooh, Survivor seasons we should actually watch. That's right, this is part three of our long story journey through mm -hmm. all 40 Survivor seasons where we rank them all right here on Sykes' Survivor Talk. Now, I want to catch you up to speed if you haven't watched the first two parts of this um, epic monologue or monolith that we're going on here. Um, the seasons that we've talked about up to this point are in order, Island of the Idols, Edge of Extinction, One World, Redemption Island, Nicaragua, Thailand, Fiji, Heroes, Healers, Hustlers, Koh Rong, Worlds Apart, Guatemala, Ghost Island, Gabon, Marquesas, David versus Goliath, as well as Game Changers. We have talked about each one of those seasons. If those are all your favorite seasons, you need to go back and watch either parts one or part two of our little trip through history here. If you don't care about those ones and you're just here to get to the good seasons, well, you're in luck because here we are in part three and we're going to be talking about, I guess, arguably the best seasons of Survivor, according to some serious experts on this matter. So objectively yep. the best seasons of survival. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously an objective scientific survey with a double blind um, control group. And, <laughs> uh, you know, we've done a lot of, of research on this. We've polled the audience. We've polled the electorate. We've done a lot of polling. And I'll tell you, this is the definitive ranking of the survivor seasons. Let's get into it then without further ado. All right. So when we last left off, I had identified my uh, 20, I want to say my 21st favorite Survivor season of all time, and that was Survivor Game Changers. Paul gave me his 21st. That was Survivor Winners at War. You better be ready. So I'm going to give you my 20th favorite Survivor season of all time. Paul doesn't know any of these, so this is exciting. It's exciting. No for idea Paul what's coming. It is for you, the viewer. So here we go. My 20th season of all time is Survivor Millennials versus Generation X. This is season 33. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. That's a good spot for it. Okay. Well, I take it we don't have a match. So not we don't yet because Paul hasn't mentioned that. So how this works is that we keep mentioning seasons where they rank on our lists. And once both of us have mentioned them at any given point, now some of these seasons would have been mentioned in previous episodes. But once each one of us has raised the season as a topic for discussion and we have a match, then we'll talk about that season. So Paul's now going to give us his 20th favorite season. And we'll see if we have a match. All right. Without further ado, my 20th favorite season of Survivor is Survivor number 29, San Juan del Sur. Ooh, San Juan del Sur. And guys, this is a match. Uh, Where'd you I, have this one ranked? I had this one ranked at number 22. So we're very close on this very one. Close. We're almost simpatico. As much as I want to say, what? You're crazy. That doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Uh, there's not going to be that much conflict on this one. So let's dive in and talk about survivor san juan del sur now why don't you get us rolling while i bring up the cast photo of the attractive people on survivor san juan del sur all right this sounds good i think this is as high as anyone should rank san juan del sur and i could actually think that i would hear out a case for why it would be ranked in the bottom 10 seasons however i really think this season picks up steam along the way i think the first half is pretty brutal um but uh it has an arc to the winner that is so satisfying, it couldn't help but go up in my ranking. Um, Natalie winning after her sister gets voted out first and getting her revenge from Jeremy Collins going down is just a great through uh, narrative to the story. And um, there's a few memorable characters along the way, not many. Um, <laughs> this season gives us, um, it gives us Keith Nail, it gives us Jeremy Collins. Now, Keith if, Nail, here, right, can you see everybody? What I'm, can, can you, Paul, can you see what I'm drawing? Yeah, I here? see it. There's Keith. Okay, F look at work. Here's Keith Nail. Keith Nail is inexplicably popular. Um, inexplicably popular. I could see, you know what? I could see why he has that a little bit of like hick appeal. Sure. Keith has one or two good moments. I have no idea why people revere Keith as much as they do. Now, you talked about Jeremy Collins. This is the first appearance of Jeremy Collins. Most recently appeared on Winners at War and uh, subsequently showed up on Survivor Second Chances Cambodia, which is the season that he won. He is looking very, very stacked. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Jeremy. Yep, continue. Okay. Um, you know, outside of Jeremy, Keith, and Natalie... There's not a lot going. I don't. Which one's Natalie over here? Ooh, Natalie's 
so we've good. got uh, I think she's on the, this is I for think... sure Natalie yeah That's I think Natty, so. Natalie yeah. and that is Nadia right there yeah I'm sure I love this yeah, okay. telestrator this is amazing yeah. I think Natalie's a great winner um, and I mm -hmm. was glad to see her play again unfortunately to this to this season's detriment it also gives us Kelly Wentworth and keeps giving us Kelly Wentworth over and over again here she is, everybody. Everyone's favorite, Kelly Wentworth. Yeah, Kelly Wentworth, boy, she does look very attractive here in this photo. Yeah, this sure is does. taken some years ago, but uh, Kelly Wentworth had almost no presence whatsoever on this season and somehow, amazingly, was able to campaign her way into Second Chances. I don't know how she did it, but she was a big presence on Rob Has a Podcast at the time when they were doing the Mr. Sur or Miss Survivor competition, I should say. Right. And I think she raised her profile quite a bit um, at that time. I think she's a bit of a social media hustler. I definitely do believe she's a social media hustler. She is the only survivor to ban me from Instagram. <laughs> Are you going to tell us that story or? Uh... Uh, yeah, you know, it's not really that interesting, but I think Kelly Wentworth, who lives, to the best of my knowledge, in the Pacific Northwest, was on her Instagram and she's holding up a bottle of Fiji water. You know, it's like a bottled water company. And I'm uh, not very pro bottled water, especially considering that, like, she went and played in, I want to say, Cambodia. I can't remember. This is filmed obviously in Panama. Uh, no, sorry, it's in Nicaragua. That's where San Juan del Sur is. But a lot of these countries have serious problems with uh, pollution. And, you know, if you've been to any of these places, Cambodia jumps to mind. There's just plastic everywhere, every lake, every ocean. Like every time you have access to the water, you go to this beautiful, pristine beach and it is coated with these stupid plastic water bottles because everybody there is afraid to bring, drink the water. So I'm like, I wrote on there, kind of, I mean, I thought I was respectful about it. Uh, I don't know, Kelly, that you, if you're living in the Pacific Northwest, you should necessarily be promoting the consumption of bottled water, given that, you know, you know, I also live in the Pacific Northwest and our tap water is, you know, we should be encouraging people to not, you know, waste whatever. It was some big diatribe about being environmental. And then uh, it just kind of gained a, a life of its own where people started uh, getting mad at me and, dra <laughs> and dragging me and just flaming me. And then I love, I just love getting dragged into stuff like that. Like I won't back down. I'll just go harder and harder and harder. And then eventually uh, Kelly Wentworth banned me. And then she went, uh, I think she was on some podcast or something shortly after that. And she went on about how some crazy guy was, was, uh, went nuts on her on Instagram. So oh, was that, and you were the crazy guy in question? Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and I didn't even, I was like, I just think it's irresponsible for you to be promoting this kind of thing on your Instagram, given that, you know, you live in the Pacific Northwest and you've been to all these countries where it's a serious problem. Anyhow, that's my little, you know, one interaction that I really had with Kelly Wentworth. Uh, so uh, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. No, absolutely. I respect her banning me though. That's terrific. Uh, I just find her like, it, 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 apart, apart from that, um, yeah. In her, in her subsequent seasons, she was just a little bit too big brothery for me. She was mm. really playing it up to the cameras. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't find her that compelling of a character either. No, I don't know. I don't really know that much about her as a human. Now, I will say, when we get to Second Chances, we'll talk about Wentworth some more because she does have some very big moments, but she has mm -hmm. no moments in this. And, uh, you know, one could argue that she's voted out as a result of her father pictured here. Dale. Dale Wentworth or Farm Guy 69 on Twitter, which says all you need to know about uh, mm -hmm. Dale Wentworth, I think. Um, sure. Yeah, so for whatever reason, they brought her back, and that's fine. So, look, the twist on San Juan, San Juan del Sur is that it's clearly blood versus water. Here you have father daughter, here you have husband wife, here you have these awesome bros. So, these were the <laughs> pairs. This was the second iteration of blood versus water, which I think works pretty well if you know one of the characters already, given yes. the fact that we don't, like these are all newbie players, right? Mm -hmm. People that we may have, you may have seen the uh, Anderson twins before on um, Amazing, Amazing Race. Race. That's where Survivor picked them up from. So they have some recognition. This guy is a notorious asshole uh, and racist who mm -hmm. is, at the height of his career pitching for, I want to say the Yankees or the Mets. I have no freaking idea. Said a lot of terrible oh, yeah. things about people of color. Uh, and so he was like a real uh, villain. And so for whatever reason, and I remember at the time, his being on the show was considered controversial. And I just thought to myself, there's a million baseball players you could get on the show. Why would you get this asshole? Right. He turned out Survivor to be kind of courts controversy sometimes. I guess that's probably a lot of the reason that they did it. You know, you're in season, I want to say this is 27 or 29. 29. 
you know, of the show and you, you know, you're pushing 15 years. How can we get a, generate a little bit of buzz? Well, let's bring on this jerk. And then he brings his, um, just fantastic, just a real well-rounded person. This is, uh, <laughs> Julie. Quitzel. Not at all a trophy wife. <laughs> I don't think they're not at all. Oh, was this not his <laughs> wife? A bimbo he's dating. I <laughs> okay. I, I haven't, I can't, I mean, look, what do I remember about this? Right. So yeah, that was the premise of the show. We had a, um, that blood versus water which i think was quite successful the first time that they did it so they wanted to try it out again and they brought in new players yeah like I, there's a few like paul says there's a few uh, cast members here that are somewhat okay um, yeah josh and reed are both somewhat okay sure so here are josh and reed they're fun guys um I think one of them is some kind of a theater actor or something like that. I think they broke up after the show. Okay. Yeah, these people bored me to tears. These oh, are Jack, John Mish know, and Jack. You know what? They had a lot of actually um, good drama between them. Uh, John kept on berating Jacqueline for every move she made. Like they, they, they served as good foils for Natalie. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. I never got anything out of them and I just couldn't understand uh, their popularity. I thought it was inexplicably, um, just over overwrought. I, I didn't care for them. And these people I didn't care for either. This is Missy, uh, Missy and Baylor, who, you know, at this time I was listening to Rob as a podcast quite heavily. And so he was really getting into the soundboard and he was dropping sound bites from all these morons like Drew Christie. Basically, uh, I'm a badass. And Keith <laughs> Nails, like, I say just stick to the plan. <laughs> and, and Jeremy's like, these guys are so dumb. And all, you know, I, I, I this is, I, I really have strong memories of listening to the, the podcast at this time uh, surrounding these characters. So actually I do remember quite a few of these characters when I look at, it's nice to have the cast photo up here. Right. Um, and I do think it's a decent season um, just outside of the top 20 for me, but you know, grounded firmly in the middle range. I would probably watch it again. Although there are a lot of ones that I would watch before it. Yeah. From listening to what you said about it though, I'm, I'm surprised you don't have it ranked lower. You don't seem to like a lot about this season. Um, so what is it about this season that makes you rank it as high as you did? I think Natalie's a great winner. I think that yeah. the end game play by her was incredible. I think she yeah. pulled off a lot of moves. I think nobody, I mean, her sisters voted out first, you know, and being the most high profile people probably on the show at the time, just because they had recently come off the amazing race. Um, I was really surprised to see her sister Nadia, um, yeah, Nadia go home. And then her and Jeremy were quite a pair and you know, that, played into the winners at war dynamic and i really enjoyed what she did um basically you know everybody else on the season got their come up it's courtesy of natalie anderson right. so that's why i rate it this high i remember really liking jeremy collins and i think those are the two people that i really liked yeah. and i yeah I, I liked the gameplay from her and I, I liked that there were a lot of moves that i didn't necessarily see coming and she was able to save herself quite a few times yeah absolutely this season really rides on the back of natalie and jeremy yeah, definitely, definitely. So are we, uh, we happy with our discussion of San Juan del Sur? We are. Great, let's move on here. So hopefully I can make this work as seamlessly again. So I've got you pegged in there, San Juan del Sur. Now we're getting into the uh, teens. And mm. at, coming in at number 19 for me is Survivor South Pacific. Uh, I guess we're talking about South Pacific now. Oh, yeah, you had South Pacific ranked up at 24. So we are I going did. to be talking about Survivor South Pacific. I'm going to scroll down here to my notes. You lead us off while I find the cast photo of these beauties. All right. I have no idea why I had ranked this season so high. Um, this oh. was a, such an insufferable version of Coach. The religiosity in this season was almost tanked it for me. But I guess it does give... You know, it gives up this breakout character in Cochrane. Um, it has a good winner in Sophie. Here's John Cochrane, everybody's favorite. People mm -hmm. love John Cochrane. They love him. Mm -hmm. you now, who can blame him? Uh, we have our first appearance of Sophie Clark, winner of South Pacific. And Sophie Clark goes on to play, I think, a very good game. It winners at war. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're saying you don't know why you ranked this so high. I could tell you why I ranked it where I ranked it. Yeah. I mean, so what's the, you've got Redemption Island on this. So let's, the basic premise of this is you've got a couple of returning players who are here for reasons that nobody understands, other right. than the fact that it gives the cast some recognition. We've got Coach. This is Coach's third iteration. And then we've got, I believe, at the time, the third iteration of Ozzy, who has a new hairdo. I don't understand the, the casting of these two, though, in terms, they're not like counterparts, they're not rivals. 
I doubt um, they had ever met one another at any point. Yeah, right. Think, yeah, but anytime you see one of these returning player seasons where you have two or three people in the mix, they've already gone down the line and asked other people to do it who have said no. And I can't right. remember exactly who was in the mix for this one, but presumably they were people that made more sense than Ozzy and Coach. And I remember right. this at the time thinking, like, well, what, why are these? I don't understand why these people are here. Now, right. despite my curiosity about it, both of the players made a very big impact on the season um, and they were featured right up until the very last episode. And I think that's what the show wanted. I think this is the series of the show that really cements the idea for future partial, um, partial returnee player seasons. You know, I, you know, the return of Wentworth in game. Um, when did Wentworth come back in Second Edge Chances? Of, yeah, Edge of Extinction. No, 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 no. Where they had David Wright and Wentworth. Oh, and right, yeah. Edge of Extinction. Where they just got picked off. Where mm-hmm. finally the newbies figured out, wait a second, every time we have two or three of these returning cast members, they seem to make it to, at least one of them makes it till the end. Right. So I think that's a direct product of this season having happened. And it is, it makes no sense how these people get to the end. But I do, I'm a sucker for any returning player season. And you're right. The religiosity of this series was, oh, it was so insufferable. But there are a lot of interesting characters. Well, let me talk about Coach for a little bit. Do you, I'd ask you a question. Was sure. this, did Coach just find religion and become a weird religious cult leader? Or was this a calculated move, a uh, survivor move? Yeah, so here's Coach. He's really angelic now. And look, he's got the symbol of Jesus on him. So Mm -hmm. you know what? I actually went back and took a quick peek at Token Teens. And Coach Mm -hmm. does have a very prominent, um, prominently featured cross around his neck. So I assume that Coach has always been somewhat religious, but it just goes over the top here. And, you know, it's a great, you know, to, to be fair to Coach, it brings the people together. It, it, it allows him to cement this alliance of, you know, religious people. And I don't know how many, like Sophie's involved in this alliance, but I don't think Sophie, and I think she goes as far as to say on this. I'm like, I'm not really into this at all. Mm-hmm. Brandon Hance, and, uh, coach keeps Brandon Hance in his back pocket the entire time, is extremely Jesus crazy at this point mm-hmm. in his life. Just crazy in general. I mean, you could yeah. put a sort of <laughs> <laughs> adjective in front of the word Jesus. Um, or sorry, any, I should say any noun, proper noun or other noun <laughs> after the word crazy. And Anyone would, with a loco tattoo is not too particular about what they're crazy about. I don't know if you've seen him lately, um, but he has full face tattoos. Does he really? Oh, oh yeah. He does a little, he does a little show now. This is a, a little bit what he wore. Neck tattoos for sure. There's like some kind of a dragon here. So Brandon Hance has gone, um, uh, yeah, full you know, full, he's fully out there, but Mm -hmm. he seems to be doing a little bit better now. He's gone through several marriages, I believe. And he does a little podcast or he does a little YouTube show that has, I guarantee you, will always have a million times more viewers than what we're, (laughs) it's probably a more slick production too. He gets all these interesting interviews. Like a lot of people go on, I took Corinne went and talked to him and Randy went and talked to him and Sugar went and talked to him. A bunch of people went and talked to him. Kind of fringy survivor survivor guy, like survivor Definitely seems like, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I, and I couldn't tune in. For, oh, Troy Zan was on there or something like that. I don't know. It's hard for me to uh, watch for that long. So, yeah, the religiosity was the real downside for me. But I just love a returning player season. And I really mm. got into, uh, look, this is uh, everyone's love affair. With Cochran. With John Cochran. Everyone mm-hmm. loves John Cochran in this one. And I do think everyone even loves John Cochran in his subsequent season, um, in the one in which he wins. I don't I know. He's so like too. a fun character. He's a fun character. Uh, he's an all-time he's an all-time survivor character. He is an all-time survivor character. I do yeah, I still have issues with the casting of Brandon Hans getting back to him. I think that the, you know, we had seen almost three episodes in a row with Russell Hans and then mm-hmm. they're like, "Man, we have we've milked that cow pretty hard and that teat has dried up." But what else right. you got in the Hans clan? What do you got what else you got in the Louisiana swampland? <laughs> Let's dredge up another Hans from the bayou. And that's what they did, and it turned out to have. I mean, he's okay on this season, but also terrible. But when he he's also him, terrible, there's a time when he was like one of the girls uh, he felt was tempting him with oh. her female, right? Like a. Um, it's like a Jezebel. A Jezebel, yeah, yeah. I want to say it was this one. Okay. But I'm not a thousand percent. I thought sure. it was this one. Um, I thought it was the one. Um, not her. No, this one. There, yes, yes. I'm fairly certain. Is that Michaela? Yes, wasn't that? Yeah, because Keith 
Tollefson mm. ended up, I think he was married. And right. then Keith, and this is Whitney Duncan, mm. right, right here. And he, Keith and Whitney ended up hooking up. I think he, um, you know, violated some marriage vows and uh, ended up hooking up with uh, Whitney Duncan here. And I still think they're married. And they went on I the amazing- she was, I thought she was married. And, and, Look, and, and, and Russell Hans was married. It's, it was, she was, because Russell Hans was, like, was uh, complaining about that because he was apparently friends with her husband. Her husband had to watch South Pacific or watch like her wife, uh, his wife cheat on him. Can you blame her? Look at Keith. Look at Keith yeah. Tollefson. What a guy, <laughs> right? Oh my God. What a hunk. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I think Sophie's an underrated winner. I think she was <laughs> underedited because they spent so much time on this lunatic. Right. Um, and it's too Ozzie, bad yeah. about coach. I will say, because I was a huge coach fan for this season. Even during the season, I still kind of pulled, was pulling for coach to win. Cause I didn't know anything about Sophie at the time. And it's only in retrospect where I think Sophie's a better player than she but she's like 21 when she plays this right. she's really young and she doesn't get a hell of a lot of screen time. Right. I also love Jim Rice. Jim Rice was in the running for second chances. Yeah. Didn't make it on the show. That's the last you're ever going to see Jim Rice's face on TV, but yeah, I thought he was decent that. enough. So I would yeah. like to see him play in second chances. Yeah, I would have too over. Mm, I mean, anybody. <laughs> Take your pick in second chances. Wow, not a big second chances fan. No, I you know I like the season, but if you look at the cast and if, in, in a vacuum, each person, it sounds like it's going to be a terrible season because there's a lot of people you're kind of like meh. I guess it's a lot better than Game Changers. I'll tell you that. Yeah. So overall, I think this is um, yeah we we ranked it somewhat similarly. We're not too far apart on no. this one. Yeah, the whole prayer thing really, really, really hurts me. And Ozzy sets a record in this one for being a voted out three times mm -hmm. in one game yeah which is why redemption island shouldn't really be a thing you shouldn't have people being voted out twice and still in contention and he nearly won it he voluntarily gets voted out he voluntarily yeah but i think he was getting voted out anyway then he legitimately gets voted out and mm -hmm. then he comes back in and he nearly nearly if he he's this close to winning that um, the final the challenge where he gets voted out i think it's yeah. final five or something like that or maybe it's final four he's way ahead way ahead I remember I was like come on you got it yeah and even me I was kind of cheering I'm just a real sucker for returning players I have no idea yeah. I just know I'm better than I know like Sophie or whatever and I thought it would be more interesting sure um, but three times in a season eh, that's ridiculous yeah and I will say about this season it has one of the all-time great betrayals um, in Survivor history where everyone hates Cochran afterwards it's amazing I don't know why they hate him so much he's such a tremendous yeah non-factor in most and I don't, did his betrayal even cost their team? I don't even know if it did. I think it caused them to be down in, uh, yeah, I did. Yes, it did. They're down in numbers and they got all picked off. So it definitely did. Yeah, maybe you're right. I'd have to go yeah. back and check out the details. Look, Cochran did what he needed to do. He made a big enough name for himself on the season. He was, mm -hmm. you know, funny and witty and hilarious and just such like an unbelievable buffoon. <laughs> and he got invited back and he got to win a million bucks and now he turns them down. Now... Sorry, I'm too busy for Winners at War. I got this great show writing. I got a great job writing for, um, you know, middle of the road NBC sitcoms. Would you even call it the middle of the road? I thought it'd be like a shitty television series. I don't know what he writes for. Yeah, I, mean, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I have no idea. But he still is doing well enough to turn down the invitation to play for $2 million on Winners at War. They're coming for you. <laughs> so... Uh, that's kind of all I got on South Pacific. An enjoyable yeah. season, to be sure. Some memorable, some non-memorable. This is one of the least memorable people of all time. Mm -hmm. In Rancher Rick, Rick. Cowboy Rick. Who cares? Cancelled. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I would say watch it if you haven't watched it. I can't rewatch it because of the religiosity. It would be hard to stomach, I think, at this point to rewatch. Ah, uh, maybe someday. Uh, who mm -hmm. knows what? Who knows what kind of invalid I'm going to be in my later years? <laughs> I may be completely immobile and have nothing else to do. I'd rather rewatch Survivor than watch one episode of Big Brother. So that's you know all what? I got. We've been talking about the, sh the same shit for 20 years. I, I imagine we'll be doing it 20 years from now, too. So, Yeah, but I just want to have preconceived notions about it based on one, you know, um, you know cursory viewing 12 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> All right, that's all I got for South Pacific. So right. that was my number 19. You got to give me your number 19. All right. My number 19 is the number two season of the Australian Outback. Wow. Australian Outback. Just writing this down in my awesome spreadsheet here. And then I'll be mm -hmm. moving along because I haven't mentioned this one yet. And I haven't mm -hmm. ranked higher. 
-hmm. I now move along to my number 18. And my number 18 falls chronologically one after your number 19, which is Survivor Africa. Oh, Looks now like we're yes. going at the plains of Africa. Oh, excellent. I have so little to say about Africa. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I thought I had a very little to say about all of these seasons, but it seems like I have way more to say than I thought I would. So, yeah, to start us out. Well, I scrambled to find the cast photo. OK, my preamble is going to be really short because I just remember not being into the season from the get go. I don't know. It, it all looked mm. like what the, the filming of it looked at, like washed out desert storm footage. Um, mm. It was just a really kind of drab looking environment. Uh, I, I remember agree with you there. I remember the cast being really lethargic because they were starving to death. It did have a very interesting cast. There's some big characters here mm -hmm. in, in Big Tom, T-Bird. Uh, Lex is a big character. Um, so we have Big Tom. We have T-Bird. As you say, Lex. Yep. Agreed. Kind of like a winner in Ethan. Here's Ethan Zahn. He just came back and we saw him on season 40. He went from season 3 to season 8 to season 40. Survived cancer along the way i think multiple cancers survived dating jenna maraska for a long time along the way <laughs> terrible um yeah ethan's super nice guy didn't jump off the screen but i think everyone was probably satisfied with the winner i think yeah no see no, I, have I, think this ranked, I, think so. I have this ranked much higher and the reason being is that i just come off survivor australian outback which i loved like at the time, I really, really, really enjoyed that show, and I was so into mm -hmm. it. I didn't really watch the Porneo, and then mm -hmm. I, when I watched Survivor Australia, that was the first season I'd watched from beginning to end, and I was so into, like, Elizabeth and just all the action that went down on Survivor Australia. I was like, okay, what else do you have for me? Give me the next season. Oh, you're going to Africa? That's so exotic. And the show at that time was still uh, very about a lot more about survival. Viewers. What's that? Still pulling in a lot of viewers, too. Oh, with so many viewers. I mean, so many people have seen um, this cast and could recognize a lot of them, although we haven't seen that many people back. The people that I've circled have been back, except for T-Bird here, who was in the mix to come back again. I guess outside of that, we haven't seen anybody else come back at all. Um, Do you remember anyone else? Like, I'm looking at these, I'm like, sure. yeah, nope, nope, Absolutely. nope. So yeah. I'll give you some favorites here. Kelly okay. Goldsmith. I'd love to okay. see Kelly Goldsmith play again. I really liked her a lot on the show. Sure, that's Jessie Camacho. She's one of the uh, more attractive ladies who have ever been on the show. That's mm -hmm. Silas. That's Frank Garrison. Frank went mm -hmm. on a date with Brandon down here. <laughs> it's Brandon Quinton. That's Kim Powers. I thought Kim Powers was cute. Oh, look, I'll give her a little heart. That's nice. <laughs> I can't draw. Come on, I do it. That's the dentist, Carl. Like, I know all these people. So oh, I know wow. the cast okay, yeah. very, very, very well. Linda, that's Mama Kim, or Kim Johnson, I want to say. Diane Ogden, Clarence Black. Like, ah, look at that. I wow. nailed them all. Wow, you know the entire cast of Africa. That's amazing. Yeah, I think I was much more into it, obviously, than you. But I did, mm -hmm. I mean, the Paganging wasn't quite getting old for me, but it was getting a bit old for me. There was yeah. an interesting, this is the first time that we have a um, tribe swap. And, uh, you know, sort of in the midst of the game, this is not a merge, this is a tribe swap, it didn't happen in the other two seasons, where the young players, including Silas, who later got into, he ran afoul of the law in some way, um, kind of got screwed over. And uh, I felt at the time it was so tremendously unfair because I didn't like that there was random chance inserted into this game that I felt was entirely skill-based. And so right. this is the first season to insert some of that. And after that, it kind of becomes a Pagani. Like you, you get every, like I probably wouldn't go back and watch this apart from seeing characters like Tom and Lex mm -hmm. who are probably all time characters. Yes. Um, I would have to say, and I have a feeling down the line, we probably see Lex again. Only in a legends type season. In a legends type season. I think you see Lex again, or if they did a third times the charm type season. I don't know if we need to see Lex again. I kind of just watched his vote out on um, All Stars. Yeah. And also his subsequent travel council. It's just embarrassing what a baby he is. He is a bit of a baby about it. This is He's, ridiculous. What is he now, about 52 or something like that? He's got to be up there, right? He's old as hell. Yeah, no, he yeah. looks terrible. He's 58 or something like that. Wow, okay, yeah. He definitely looks a little bit rough. Um, but look, I, I just, there, the environment at that time and the location played so much of a, of a role in the show. I, you know, probably one of the first 
TV shows that I'd seen that was set in Africa. I, I want to say it was in Kenya, but I can't can't remember exactly. And yeah, I was I was into it, but I was starting to get a little disappointed, which is why I didn't really get into Marquesas as much. I watched it, but not all the way through. And in Thailand, I was I was pretty out. Right. But I still enjoyed it. But like even the cast photo here is like, as you say, kind of brown and bland. Like this is yeah. what you're, this is what you were that's looking kind of at the entire time. Just mm-hmm. dust. Dust. That's right. That's why I just the location just killed it for me. Everyone looked so thirsty all the time. <laughs> all the time. They had to and walk like three miles to get water and stuff. Like it was a hard season, and wasn't there? Uh, didn't like they have to fence off the area because of lions or something? They did. Yeah, they could hear the yeah. lions at night. And yeah. I don't know. I remember listening to Ethan about this the other day, and he was talking about because I, I listened to a podcast with him. I just bought a T-shirt from Ethan, by the way. Yeah. And I'm really excited for it. It's so cool. Um, where how he was saying he just assumed that there were people out there with guns. Um, protecting them from the wildlife, but who knows? He, he never saw them. He, right. He could hear the animals, but he never really saw um, that they, they were protected. But well, one yeah, would have to assume that they were, and they look, they didn't die. They're all still The alive. CBS sharpshooters are sitting there in the bushes? <laughs> Presumably. Okay. Uh, so not a big fan of Africa for you. This is, yeah, I mean, you're, look, we're still in the middle of the ground here, 25 versus 18. How dare you? How dare you rank Africa? I, if you have nothing good to say about it, how do you have it at 25? You know what? It's because like the big characters really, I think, I mean, like you say, Tom is an all-time character. I think Lex is an all-time character. I think the big characters stand out quite a bit. It's just the location kills it and also the, uh, the conditions, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we keep saying that these seasons are ones we'd rewatch. I'd have a tough time going through this one. You'd have a tough time with anything under about season six, I think, because uh, the, Jeff yeah. Probst doesn't even do the play-by-play until no. after, I think, is it, maybe it's Marquesas, maybe it's the Amazon. Right. Um, and you think you hate the play-by-play until you realize, yeah, you kind of love the play-by-play. Oh, so I'm watching the challenges to Africa, because I did go back and try to rewatch it probably, you know, eight or so years ago. And right. it was, without Jeff Probst, it just seemed so hollow. Like, it just seemed like mm-hmm. a hollow, empty experience. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Well, speaking of hollow, empty experiences, let's continue <laughs> this awesome podcast. <laughs> that's an excellent segue. I mean, who's getting any joy out of this at all? <laughs> okay, that's the end of the Survivor Africa, folks. Let's get on with our next pick here. So that was my number 18. All right. We've got Africa off the board. Tell us about your number 18, Paul. Well, my 18 is one we're going to be talking about right now. What? And, oh my God. and I am shocked that you actually had this one ranked lower than me. We are going to talk about Borneo, number oh, one. Yeah. Borneo. You're shocked that I have it ranked lower? Yeah, just because it's such an iconic piece of television, right? Like, I thought that you would be lambasting me for putting it this low. That's what I thought. Can I lambaste you just because? Really? Yeah, absolutely. But I, I really... No, I'm thought... not going to do that. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. yeah, man, I don't know. I just... Uh... Fine, you tell me why you think Borneo is so great. Uh, well, I, I, mean, I don't think it's that great. I just think, I, But if you look at everyone else who ranks Survivor Seasons, Borneo usually mm-hmm. makes the top five, right? That's why people are tuning in for hot takes here. And we here's our takes. hot takes. So BB, here... Here's a hot take on BB. He's dead. <laughs> Okay, go if on. you go back and watch this season, yeah, there's probably three people worth watching in the entire season. If it wasn't mm-hmm. the first iteration, none of these people are remotely interesting except Sue, Ruby, and Rich. Everyone are, else is a whoa, dog. whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, are you seriously telling me that that Greg Buis is not an interesting character? I am absolutely telling you that Greg Buis is not. An I interesting disagree. Character. They've tried to get Greg Buis back so many times, and he is. Okay. I would, I would, <laughs> I mean, if you were talking about, say, Dirk Bean. I am talking about Dirk Bean. <laughs> or Joel Klug. Right. I definitely agree with you. Okay. But this guy, come on. This okay. guy's great. Right. This guy's great. Greg, yeah. I, I'd like to see Greg Buis again. Um, you think Kelly, that, Kelly Wigglesworth is a, a particularly compelling uh, person? So here's Kelly Wigglesworth. Kelly Wigglesworth did come back on a future season, although you wouldn't be able to tell because she looked incredibly different. Like there's something <laughs> really weird and messed up about uh, Kelly Wigglesworth. Look, Rudy is awesome. Rich is awesome. Right. Sue Hawk is awesome. Um, yeah. Greg is awesome. Yeah, I if mean, I guess people are awesome. Why'd you rank it so well? 
Here's why. Because the show itself is not awesome. These are interesting characters, the characters that I just listed, and probably the rest of them. Like, Colleen's adorable. People fell in love with Colleen. Colleen gets, on the basis of her being on the show and lasting till number six or something like that, gets to star in a movie with Rob Schneider. <laughs> how can you tell me that's not an interesting <laughs> human being? She'll always have that story to tell about how her and Rob Schneider probably probably kissed in the movie i haven't seen it it's called the animal you can go check it out but uh i mean she has disappeared off the face of the earth i think you can find her instagram out there somewhere and she's just like a married mom now or whatever here's um, my point though that any sure. any cute girl on this season who made it this far would be an icon because because it was the first iteration and okay. 60 million people were watching this right sure. there's nothing special about Polly. sure i mean she is cute she was the first cutie. She was the first survivor cutie, therefore yeah. is iconic. That said, it's not enough to, I think, have a few iconic characters. And like, you, I agree, if these people were on different shows, maybe they're not particularly um, uh, fascinating or memorable. I mean, Jenna Lewis plays again. There's J. Lou. And she also starred in her own movie. Is it an adult movie? She was in a triple X movie, and I don't mean the ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, I'm a fan on. of those movies, and I don't mean the ones with Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you, I would prefer to watch the Vin Diesel triple <laughs> X than I would anything with Jenna Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you see a lot of these. These The, the top four characters return. Mm -hmm. Right, you see Jervis return, you see uh, Jenna Lewis return, although right. albeit a long time ago. Here's why it's so low for me. It's so hard to watch. I've, I, I think I only watched it for the first time maybe five years ago. Mm -hmm. It's so slow, it's mm -hmm. so weird. It's like a totally different show. There was just so much, you know, there's so much buzz about it at the time, but I really didn't watch it. So I don't have these super great memories associated with the show. I really only watched the finale. I had been avoiding it all summer because I thought the premise sounded stupid. And, right. and I just was not into the concept of a reality television program. I didn't care about any of these people. And then some girl that I liked suckered me into watching the uh, finale with her. And uh, oh man, I was, it, was, it was so exciting. Just like, and I didn't know these characters from anybody. But, you know, the final four characters were on there and I thought it was just compelling television. And Still then the best like, tribal council of all time. Still. It probably is. Yeah. Yeah, probably is. Uh, you know, it's debatable. There's some other, some other good ones out there. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's so different than the show is now. I wouldn't watch it now, right? So I'm, you know, the, yeah. uh, everything that I've listed above it, I would watch even Ghost Island or Gabon. I would watch before I watched uh, Borneo. The term That's for fair. gonging comes from this show. And so the actual gameplay is non-existent. It's non-existent. It's non-existent. Rich is the only person who knows what game he's playing. He's the only guy who kind of figures it out, like what he actually has to do. But it's actually quite boring. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is the characters. I do find them interesting um, to an extent. But like you say, they probably wouldn't hold um, a candle to the players, the interesting players that we see. There's no coach on this, right. on this cast. Or no, there's not. Them. Yeah, but Rudy is an all-time an all time character. He's so an all-time all character. I'm not, all -time. I, I wish they didn't drag Rudy around as like a survivor mascot saying the word queer all the time. Um, yeah, that, well, it's okay. So if you want to talk about the most cancelable, <laughs> Rudy's one of the most cancelable guys. Like it's just, you know, he brought him, they brought him out a few years before he died and he was talking how rich was queer and like that kind of became his shtick. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I didn't care for it. I mean, yeah, I just didn't, the show in general, it was, it's a very interesting timepiece. It's like going back and watching Dr. No. Right. Okay, you know, Dr. No is the first James Bond movie and it introduces all these tropes and it kind of resembles a future James Bond movie, but there's a lot of elements that they hadn't figured out yet. We have that same thing here. I mean, Jeff Probst goes and has a beer with one of them at, at, at some point. He's just sitting around in a bar drinking beer with like mid game. Yeah. And I find that weird and disturbing and I was never hooked on it at the time. So it just doesn't conjure up those precious memories for me. It's, it's not, not a slick production. It's a real slog to get through. Um, Maybe if I had watched it at the time, I'd rank this a lot higher, but eh. yeah, fair enough. I still think it probably deserves to be this high or actually, you know, even where you rank it just based on the fact that it was the one that started it off and, um, and, and the big all time characters and the final tribal council. I think you could get away 
if you're trying to like, I really have to get up to speed on Survivor and I want to watch all the great seasons. This is not a season I would tell people they need to go back and necessarily watch. I just, I'd say watch the last episode. Yeah, sure. Watch the last episode. You get to see all the faces and everything and maybe even watch the reunion show because I think it's a bit of a train wreck. I can't remember who was doing it at the time. I want to say like Bryant Gumbel or something stupid like that. Right. It was probably something like that. Yeah. Probst wasn't even there. So, I mean, as a little time piece, just like the James Bond movie, it's like a little time capsule. Yeah. You know, you go back in time and see what it was like in the year 2000. <laughs> However, I don't find it that compelling of a, of a season. Gameplay is non-existent. Anything sure. else? No, just read the Wikipedia page about it, that'll be enough. <laughs> sure. There's so many other things to read about on Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, true. So many. So uh, that's it for the um, Survivor Borneo cast. That was number 18. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about number 17. My number 17 season of Survivor mm-hmm. is, uh, I believe this is the 10th actual season, which is Survivor... Palau. Survivor Palau, okay. which this is the furthest apart we may have had one because you have this at 27 way, right. way further down. So I'm going to find the Palau uh, cast picture here. And then why don't you tell us a little bit about Survivor? Tell us the premise. What, what do you like about Sur- or didn't like about Survivor Palau? Because you got it. And you almost have it in the bottom, uh, in the bottom 10. It's, it's far. Yeah. Um, what I really didn't like about this season was basically Stephanie LaGrosa. Now, whether you, <laughs> and, and this season is really all about two players. It's about Stephanie and Tom, right? Sure. And I will not take anything away from Tom. Tom is a great winner. Um, here's Steph, here's our favorite, Stephanie LaGrosa. She sells pizza. <laughs> she just, go on. So <laughs> right. there, and there's, there's your winner. A Tom handsome, Westman. a handsome silver fox, Tom Westman. Look at this yeah, guy. Absolutely. Wow. Look at that guy. Mm-hmm. Which I looked that good when I was, you know, when I'm going to be his age. I'm um, his, he's, I'm the same age as that guy is. Oh, I look much better than the show. <laughs> yeah, sure. There you go. Yeah, we do. We, uh, <laughs> okay, so you're saying it's about two people and you're not a big fan of Stephanie LaGrosa. Okay. So I'll, I'll break it down what happened in this season. It's basically Stephanie's tribe lost every single challenge. And she they brought did. down to a tribe of one person with her remaining. The Ulam um, tribe decimated, correct. You will never see this again. This is the only time this will ever happen. Yeah, greatest drubbing in show history. Absolutely. I almost wish that occasionally they would throw like no try merge in just to keep people on their toes so they didn't know what strategy to employ. It is um, fun and I do like that they did it. Absolutely, and I wish they would have thrown it in once in a while. Um, right, Because I sure. think it's kind of just, just kind of fun to do it that way. Um, you won't see it again though, the production doesn't like that. Um, no, it's, and it's, it's mis- it was kind of miserable to watch, honestly. Like, you never got was, to see the other team. Yeah, it was miserable to watch. And there's only so many personal dynamics you can have between a tribe of two people. Um, mm-hmm. So, and, and then on the other tribe, I think they just let Tom Weston walk to the end. Um, it does I don't think it was that easy. There was some gameplay. There was a bit of a pagongi, and he did have... He had a bit of an uphill battle versus some of the people that were on in his alliance. But yeah, Tom has an easy go of it, but he does do very well in the challenges. He does. He's, he's, he is a dynamo of the challenge. He's probably one of the all-time best challenge performers. Oh, there's um, no probably about it. Tom's amazing. Right. And then there is the um, – it has a great challenge, I think, at the end where they have to stand on basically a pillar in the water for 12 hours. Does it yeah. make for the greatest TV? Probably not, but I like the idea. If you want to go to the tribal, uh, final tribal council, you have to earn it, and it's a battle, battle of wills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that a lot, and I kind of don't love the fact that even Jeff was talking about on the latest edition about, ah, oh, these challenges are too hard, so we tried to make them, or they lasted too long, so we tried to make them so they barely last at all. Like, <laughs> look, yeah. I don't have to sit there for eight hours. Yeah. Right? I, I have to sit there for the same amount of time watching the challenges, irrespective of how much they go on in real life. I like seeing people struggle. I want to see who can endure. There's no such thing as a 20 minute endurance challenge. That's Absolutely. Not, that's not a thing. So, I mean, I thought it was a really, really compelling um, final episode. There's uh, Ian, Ian and Tom. Uh, and then I want to say Katie as well. There's Katie. So they were in the final three and they, they, this is one of the most epic, if not the most epic. And I hate to toss around the term epic. Uh, final tribal or final immunity challenge of all time where these two um katie katie's eliminated after about five hours and then these two go on for what is it eight or 12, 12 hours or 12. Like they're well into the night 
and they're well into the night and then eventually Tom effectively guilts Ian into coming. There's a lot of really interesting character interactions on this particular show where, you know, people are still buying hard into like, we're making friends out here, you know, and you're, you're, def you're breaking up our friendship. And Tom convinces this guy that he's got to step down in order to maintain their friendship and, and maintain his integrity. And so this guy's this kid steps down and friggin' Tom goes on to win, you know, a million bucks and he doesn't, it's not a landslide. I think Katie gets, no, Katie only gets one vote. Right. I remember because Katie's not that great, but she's still a good player and people kind of forget that. Right. So I thought that was interesting. I thought it was one of the most unfair things that have ever happened where before they even started playing, they did a schoolyard pick em, and Wanda and Jonathan Libby, pictured here, are not picked in the schoolyard pick em, and then they just leave. They're just kicked out of the game. They don't even go to a tribal council. They're just gone. So I thought that was wild, and they were supposed to bring them back on the subsequent season, but then everyone just loves Stephanie so much. There's our, there's Yas Queen Stephanie. Uh, <laughs> that they brought uh, Stephanie LaGrosa back. So you're not a big fan of Stephanie, I take it. I, I am not. Jared, were you? At the time? Yeah, I totally okay. was. I yeah. totally liked watching Stephanie uh, at the time. So, um, you she know, was I just- She was just a loser's edit. She was just like, oh, I'm the last of my tribe. And oh, she was just always just, I don't know, it was a self-pity party. I guess I was still getting sucked in by that at this point. Yeah. I mean, I'm in my 20s or whatever it is when I'm watching this, and I'm still getting sucked in by the story that the show created around Stephanie to make her seem sympathetic. Right. When you think about it, and James brings it up later, he's like, <laughs> in, on the super next season, or uh, Heroes vs. Villains, like, she's the ultimate loser. <laughs> like, her tribe yeah. lost every single uh, immunity challenge. Why are we wanting to play with her? And why do we think she's so great? She is right. just a, a tremendous loser. And the Sheen real, comes off her super fast in her, she comes on the very next season. I think that's the first season they bring people back. We talked about it. We talked about Guatemala. We talked about Guatemala, yeah. Yeah, so we talked about her in Guatemala, and she's just not cool anymore. So you don't buy into Stephanie. I like her. Um, you know, I like Kobe. I really like uh, James uh, Miller here. Uh, let me go back. To, here's James Miller. He's really oh, he fun, like, like redneck character. He does in this picture. He doesn't look yeah. anything like Tyson outside of that. Here's yeah. Hunky Greg. Uh, there was like a showmance between, okay, let's get a different color here for showmance, pink. For Greg and showmance Jen. between Greg and then Jen Lyon, who I sadly wrote RIP on because Jen passed um, away from, I want to say breast cancer, some cancer many cancer. years ago. Yeah, and it's sad they had a cute little showmance and she was really uh, smart and cute. Um, sorry, I keep saying, um, I gotta stop that. But then and that was their big showmance and they were in the final five, I think. So I don't know. I think this, sh this series is underrated and I would actually be interested in watching this again. Although when I think about the Paganging, maybe I would have it on like a serious fast forward. Yeah, the Paganging is a bit, a bit hard to rewatch. Uh, who's the girl on the very far right? That is Ashley Ashby. Was Ashley. she a very, an early boot? Second out, I want to say. Okay. No. I wonder what made you bring her up. Yeah, no reason. <laughs> no reason no, at all. I can't think of any reasons either. <laughs> I think actually, I I did Google search. I'm not Russ Meyer, her. okay? He's obsessed. <laughs> Russ Meyer is obsessed with breasts. <laughs> Faster, pussy cat, kill. That is no. what caught my eye, though. Sure. I mean, what, what do you think she's on the show? Because she's a Mormon? No. <laughs> two reasons. She's on that cast. <laughs> all right. So anyway, that I think that's probably all I want to say about Palau. I will say there was a fire making challenge at Final Four, which probably people don't remember. Jen and Ian go to a fire making challenge because uh, final or uh, Ty was forced at Final Four, and then we didn't have a rock draw. We had a fire making challenge. So I want to say this is the first iteration of the fire making challenge, but I'm not 100 percent sure because I don't care that much. <laughs> I think it probably would have to be, but I don't really know either. All right. Well, I guess we'll agree to disagree on the importance and entertainment value of Survivor Palau, the 10th season of Survivor. We are now going to move on, unless you have anything else to say about Palau? I don't really do. Uh, could you understand not liking Palau, though? Or for sure. You, okay, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure I could. Um, I don't know, there's just something, I still remember it quite well. I know I watched it, and then I didn't watch Guatemala after that, but I think the whole Stephanie LaGrosa thing was so big. Like, she was so big. She was so big. That they time. brought her back, and I don't know, at the time I found that strangely attractive. 
in retrospect, she couldn't have a more annoying voice. I think she's from New Jersey or something. It's just so like, it's so grating her voice. Yeah, I always found her hard to watch. So that's that's. I think a lot of your um, whether you like the season or not is going to depend on your tolerance for Stephanie. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe I have it rated a little bit high. What are you going to do? I got forty seasons here. Eh, ranking things, as we know, is both arbitrary and reductive. So and fun. Well, it is fun. That's why we're doing it. So that's number 17 uh, for me, Palau. What's your number 17? Okay, let's see. At number 17, I have Survivor All-Stars. Whoa, All-Stars ranking pretty low on the list. We're not going to be talking about All-Stars just yet. So okay. we're going to jump to my number 16 ranked Survivor season, and that is Survivor, I want to say, oh, God, is it 12? Exile Island. Survivor okay. Panama and Exile Island. Island. I don't think All that right. you've I don't think that you've discussed that one yet. So we what's your sixteen? My number sixteen, and we will talk about this, is number thirty-three, Millennials versus Gen X. Ooh, M V. That's high. What do you have that at? At nineteen? Twenty? Uh Millennials versus Gen X at twenty. I okay. don't know. And it just scraped in there. Like I kind of bandied it about for a little bit. Um, I'm going to let you uh, explain how this is at number 16 while I find uh, the cast photo. Okay. I will say this is an amazingly fun cast. Hmm. And at, I think at final nine, at any given point, with a couple of exceptions, you could have said to yourself, oh, I wouldn't mind to see a so-and-so win or so-and-so. And I will say that I wouldn't mind to have seen a Zeke win at one point. I wouldn't hmm. mind to see a Jay win. I wouldn't mind to see a Brett win. Um, Zeke. Um, you said Jay. Yeah. Here's Brett LaBelle. Brett. Yeah. Um, okay. David. Adam. Right. Um, Here's I, I Adam. It, yeah. Go on. Chris. Um, tell me at any point, like it, you would have said to yourself, I could see how the edit is, is pointing in this direction or this direction. Um, it's and true. I wasn't. That's true. When I think back, I don't think I really knew that Adam was going to win. I. Th and I really like when you watch a season and you're not a hundred percent sure who's necessarily going to win. Right. I had a feeling it was going to be Adam. I just didn't, I didn't see Brett LaBelle walking away with it. Right. There's yeah, probably I mean, some point at which I convinced myself that Ken McNichol was going to win. <laughs> which would have been, yeah. I mean, easily the dumbest winner in the history of the show. It would have been the dumbest winner, but we had no idea how disliked Ken was. They didn't give us that idea. Like, apparently, a lot of people did not get along well with them. But I was like, yo, know, he just looked like an affable male model himbo to sure. me. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, he certainly is handsome. So we we should mention David Wright too. Uh, oh, who's a real, who's how a real that? breakout David character? Wright. David Wright's a great character. I mean, mm -hmm. and I still think – so David Wright comes back in um, the recent Exile one. Exile Island. Egg, no. Not, Edge, Edge of Extinction. Edge of Extinction. Yeah. You know, and, and Dave Wright is, is chomping at the bit to come back, and I, I see why he does. I don't know if he regrets it. He, he makes it the furthest, I think, of all the returning players. Yes. Possibly maybe Wentworth. I can't remember. But he has the most impact on the game, for sure, because he's actually kind of in it. But this is the point where the new players really have it out for him. But Dave Wright's a great character. Zeke in his first iteration, I think Zeke. Zeke is overrated, but he's still good. He's still good. Yeah. Um, is this Taylor? That's this Taylor. Taylor. And there's and Figgy on the other Figgy. side. Yeah. And they had a bit of a thing. I thought Figgy was – I think Figgy is on their far right, actually. I think that's Figgy. Who's this? Oh, this is Michelle, Michelle Schubert. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Um, let me re – now, Michelle – is uh, very religious. Yeah. So, Michelle believes in things like dragons and real ethereal out there shit. Here's Figgy. So we had uh, Fig Tales. This was a, there's not that many show showmances, so they do right. kind of stand out when they happen. And then they had this big showmance and Figgy was really into it. And then right after the show, it turns out that Taylor had impregnated some, some woman back home mm -hmm. and uh, he had a girlfriend and uh, they obviously, you know, they obviously kicked it at Ponderosa. And uh, I think uh, Figgy was a little upset about that. I've heard a few podcasts with her. You know what? If I'm casting another season, I'm looking for a way to try to get Figgy back on. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. I could see that. I could yeah. see that. Of this cast, let's see. Let's talk about the people. And it is a pretty decent cast. So Jay here, people love Jay. Ah, I like never him. really got it. He's been on Sequester. I think he's maybe he's on Sequester right now, but he's been on Sequester, which is an MTV show, which I'm told mm -hmm. I should watch and I haven't. So there's something about that guy that people like. 
He votes. I thought he was good. At, I thought he was good at the game. I do think he was good at the game. He notoriously votes off Michaela, who Mika- so Michaela's returned again, um, and she was a great character. I think she came back the subsequent season. I think you really got to wait a season or two. Love to have seen her on a heroes versus villains too. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's really good. And yeah, would I be disappointed to see Jay again? No. Do I think it's happening? Nah. You're just so deep into a show now. Like, how do you decide? Nothing. No one that they bring back surprises me. Okay, I'd be surprised if they brought back Rachel Ako. Sure. Like that. That wouldn't make any sense at all. No. But no. someone like a Figgy, I could see possibly happening. Well, I like this guy. So I've met this. I've met Chris Hammonds in real life. He's this, great. He's a mountain of a man. That guy. He's huge. Yeah, but he's so nice. And then I've also met Brett Labelle, and they're the best of friends. And uh, yeah, Brett Labelle's an all-time survivor. Well, you know he. It's funny. He's amazing in real life. He was okay on the show. I just think he's been much better on like the Rob has a podcast circuit um, right. relative to his time on the show. He was good. Um, but I think he was maybe not, um, maybe not given the platform that he needed to on the show to really he probably just didn't impact the game as much. Like I think he's a good personality, but he didn't really impact the game. Sure. And so Chris and Brett have gone on to play on The Amazing Race because people really like the dynamic between the two of them. Mm, I don't know. I kind of like Hannah. Hannah shows yeah. up in the final. In the final, she, I think she's a no vote finalist, or maybe one. She is a no vote finalist, and Aubrey really stole her spot of ever being recasted again. Yeah, Hannah's probably never coming back due to the yeah. fact that Aubrey's been back a gajillion mm-hmm. times. What else do we see? Like, what's the premise of Millennials versus Gen X? It's another one of these hokey premises yeah. that Jeff, you know, crams down our throat. Basically, go. Oh, remember how he was talking? Remember, Jay, remember Jay talking about being a millennial? You know, because they're, you know, he's trying to play up to the camera talking about, we can't live this nine to five work a day lifestyle or whatever, you know, oh. like the Gen Xers, like that's really like the Gen X mantra is working nine to five. What a way to make a living. Like, like yeah, there's this... any real distinction. Millennials are like 40 years old now. <laughs> they're this... seriously, I think the cutoff's 1980. Like, Yeah. Uh, they, they've always been arbitrary distinction. This season is one of the worst offenders from really hammering home a theme. I'll agree uh, with theme. you. Yeah. yeah. I'll agree. I'll agree with you there. I do think there's good characters all over, um, all about on the show. So I do like it, which is why, look, I put it in my top 20. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it gets up quite this high, but yeah, whatever. But once the merge hits, you get this crazy thing that happens that anyone okay. who looks like they're trying to take control of the game gets axed immediately. Chris puts his head out. Chris gets yep. axed. Then yep. Zeke tries to take control. Zeke get, gets, he gets one vote where he gets his way. He gets axed. Um, you know, it, it, it just kind of goes in that direction. It's so unpredictable. Um, alliances are always blurring. I think it's mm-hmm. really fun. Yeah, there's a rock draw too. Yeah, there's a rock draw where uh, Jessica goes home. Jessica um, Lewis gets canceled on the rock draw. There's also big moments where David early on plays an immunity idol for Jessica when she was going home by a vote. Oh, five yeah. To two, right? Just big moments like that. He makes a fantastic fake idol. I can't remember if it ever gets played or not. I think it does. Yeah, um, yeah a lot, there's a lot of big moments on this, uh, on this season. There are a lot of fun people. This is high on my list of shows that I want to rewatch. Yeah. It's very yeah. high. I do think there are a lot of interesting people on here. And uh, yeah, I mean, that, that shows in the fact that we've seen a few of these people return so far. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw one or two more of them. Like, you've got three that have already come back. It wasn't that long ago. This is what, season 33? Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if you saw one or two more of them come back. And I, <laughs> I'm thinking you're seeing David Wright again at some point. I'm pretty sure you'll see David Wright again. I guarantee point. you're seeing Adam Klein again at some point. There you're going to see Adam. There's no way, conceivable way that Adam Klein doesn't come back again. So I think, I think we do. So yeah, no. Um, anything else? No, everyone else is pretty borderline for ever coming back. But there's a few people I said, oh, good, I'd like to see them back. But I don't think, sure. I'm not sure anyone is. Mm, yeah, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't place a lot of money on it except for Adam and probably David Wright. Yeah. I think the show likes David Wright a lot. And I think he did good, well enough on his second season to maybe be maybe be in the conversation so i'm going to uh remove our cast photo here of lovely people and then how many have we done oh i think we've done um five or six that's it i I feel like we did okay i'm just going to run through this really quickly i know we did san juan del sur that's one you've got to count okay we did san juan del sur um millennials versus gen x two south pacific three africa four Palau, five. Borneo, six. Is that it? 
that's terrible. How long have we been going for here? Oh, we did Only Sam Wendell. Okay, we well we'll do a few more then. Right? Yeah, let's try to get let's try to get up to yeah let's try to get up a little bit higher. Okay, let's do it. Sure. So I'm gonna get jump into my number fifteen season. My number mm -hmm. fifteen season is I don't think we're necessarily talking about this yet. It hasn't come up. Survivor Philippines. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now we're getting into the good. Now we're we're at fifteen. We're getting into the real into the, juicy ones. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So at fifteen, I have second chances, Cambodia. Oh wow! Okay. You think that's really low? I think it's look. I mean, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be all end reasons. all, but yeah, yeah, you're wrong. Yeah, <laughs> stupid. What a stupid place to put it. Okay, so second chances. That means we get to move on to number 14, and this is going to be a talking edition. We're going to talk mm. about this uh, season right now. I got a lot to say about this, I think. This is Survivor number two, the Australian Outback. Survivor okay. Two, Australian Outback. Excellent. Lead us off while I find the appropriate materials here. Okay, this season is super iconic. There are seven returning players that return to play subsequent seasons. It's got uh, big moments that it's uh, etched into the minds of middle America, um, scoop and falling into the fire. Um, oh, uh, Colby um, taking Tina to the final tribal council. Um, Elizabeth Hasselback in general, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> Jerry's uh, flirtation with uh, uh, with Colby. Um, There's Jerry. Here's the Colbster. The Colbster, you know, for someone who is so hunky, relative to today's modern hunks, he's not yeah. really that ripped or anything, but all right. No, Colby, no. the first true survivor hunk, without he's question. The, absolutely, he is. Without question, yeah. They, they had the moment with Alicia and Kimmy going at it. They have... Um, look, they look so chummy chummy here. <laughs> they, really, they really go at it. They yeah, really go tribe. at it. Yeah. Then there was the guy that was uh, accused of stealing or uh, smuggling in, um, what was it? Uh, Beef jerky, uh, Kel Gleason jerky. right here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Kel's ripped. Yeah. Yeah, Kel Gleason, there he is. Yeah. Um, but, okay, so it, apart from being super iconic, if you go back and watch this season, it is super boring and predictable. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I, yeah, you, you, you tell me what you think about this this season. Okay, so here's why I have Australian Outback at number 14. And to remind people, you had Australian Outback at number 19. Definitely right. in the top 20. And like you say, incredibly iconic. How could, mm -hmm. it, how could it not be in the top 20? Why is it not in the top 10? I think for a lot of people, it's very high up there. It is memorable. Half of the cast has been back. Fully half of the cast has returned to the show. Many of them multiple times. It's, it doesn't rank higher for me because it is kind of boring. Like you say, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a pagonging. Like the first five or six votes are very interesting. And then all this crazy stuff happens with, um, with Voldemort here. Uh, <laughs> well, he who shall not be named <laughs> falls into the fire. One of the, still, if you ask some geek off the street, hey man, you, you, you seen Survivor? Yeah, seen Survivor. What do you remember about it? Oh, yeah, some guy fell into the fire once. That's this guy. Right? That's a huge moment when he falls in the fire and he gets up and all the skin's falling off of his hands. It's crazy. And so that goes down at about the final 11, final 10. And this tribe that I really liked, and the really, reason I liked, here's this tribe. This is the Kucha tribe. Right? Here's the Kucha tribe. Oh, I almost forgot Nick Brown there. Mm. So there's the Kucha tribe. And over here, we've got the Ogacore tribe. I was so into the Kucha tribe. I thought they were so fun. Right. I loved Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I mean... Look, Borneo was big, but everybody coming off of that finale, everybody's like just chomping at the bit. They want more. They want more Survivor, and they get Australian Outback, and people go crazy. This is the most people who have ever watched Survivor is who right. tune in for like the premiere of the Australian Outback and the finale of Australian. They had 50 million people at some point, which is just bonkers, given that they have like eight or ten now. So everyone remembers uh, these people, and it, incredibly iconic. And I, I was so in, Elizabeth. Look, she is around. She's so cute, and then she turns into like a rape. Whatever. We know what happens to Elizabeth. We know the Elizabeth story, but at the time, I just I couldn't have been more excited about Survivor. So that's why a season that would otherwise I think be a little bit boring due to the fact that there are no twists. And I'm not crazy about twists, but there's no hidden idols. There's no, whatever, say whatever you want, fire making twist or weird rock thing or tribe swap or anything. It's just, 
one tribe versus another tribe with nothing else going on. They're starving. There's some kind of a flood of their camp. The characters are interesting. I love the characters. I love, I love getting to know them and, and learning about them. But um, yeah, if I, I couldn't go and watch it now. I just don't think no, I could do it. it would be hard. And the, I think the only voting question the entire season is when the tribes merge and isn't yeah. Jeff Varner voted yeah. out in a tiebreaker? Yeah, there's a tiebreaker between uh, Varner right here and, gosh, I can't even remember who it came down to on the other side. But because they did a tiebreaker, if, the tiebreaker, and this is a stupid way to do a tiebreaker, if you had had votes against you previously um, and there was a tie, then those votes against you previously would be the tiebreaker and you would go home. And then somebody, I want to say Kimmy, let it slide. I think it's Kimmy. Yeah, that Jeff had votes against him. And so that's when the Kucha tribe fell apart. And that's when I kind of lost interest in the show because they just, they all go, right? They all, I mean, you know what? They actually, here's what happens is that they kind of go, you'll go, let's vote out two of the Kucha people and we'll vote out one of the people that we don't like from the Yoga Corps camp over here. So you would have like Jerry goes before Elizabeth, et cetera. Um, Amber goes before um, Roger goes. All the same, you kind of know that the way it's going, and you have Colby, you have all Ogacore, meaning you have Colby, you have Keith Thamey, and then you have Tina in the final three. And then the final two is these two. And then the dumbest move, arguably in the history of Survivor, is the Colbster taking Tina and not taking Keith. Because nobody likes Keith, Colby can easily win. Colby's a Survivor winner if he takes Keith to the final two. This is when the show had final two. He ends up taking Tina, and like, man, you can tell that when people have been out there, we mentioned this before, they get a little emaciated mm. and it really demonstrates the low quality of their augmented breasts. <laughs> <laughs> it does indeed. It really you becomes apparent. Just don't always want to see it on a 46 year old lady, but whatever. I mean, right. good, for, good for her, Tina. You be the best Tina you can be. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I don't know. For me, it was a disappointing result because I never thought Tina was that exciting. Uh, right. It is a disappointing result. And here's the thing I will say about this too. Colby gets revered as this great challenge performer. But what do you think about it? Who's Colby beating in these individual like immunity challenges, right? But he's mm -hmm. beating Keith, Jerry, Amber. Well, Nick Brown, Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> No, Mitchell isn't around long enough to no, he's around. Yeah, absolutely. perform in an individual immunity. So he's beaten Amber. He's beaten Jerry. Yeah, Scoopin's gone. Varner's gone. He's beaten Alicia. Alicia's tough. Okay. Alicia doesn't let, but like Roger. Oh, right. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, that's true. Colby is well revered as being, and he, I think he still holds some kind of a record for a tie for the most individual challenges win. It's yeah. definitely for this season. Yeah, in subsequent seasons, it's exposed that uh, Colby is, in fact, a creep pop. <laughs> I don't think he's that bad, but he's not. No, he's not a monk. You put him up against those modern day challenge heroes. Like you're, come on, Colby versus Ozzy. Yeah. Colby versus Coach. <laughs> Colby <laughs> getting owned by Coach. I love it. It happens. It happens. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I just, you know, I can't, I, I liked it so much. And that's why I put it this high because I have so much of a memory of it. There are 13 Absolutely. return appearances combined amongst the cast, amongst the eight players that have returned. It's probably not done yet. You know, right. I, I got to think that the Colbster's got another, or Colby or Jerry's got one more kick at the can. We just saw, we just saw Amber back. Yeah. Like in the most recent season. Right. They're You're scraping not... the, I mean, they know how many people watched this. So they're bringing back Kimmy Kappenberg, who's voted out in 11th place. I mean, well, I can tell you who they're not bringing back and they're all standing in a row. And that's Scoopin, Hasselback, oh, and Varner. Uh, well, here's who's not coming back. <laughs> Mike Scoopin is canceled. <laughs> Mike Scoopin's not even coming back into society, regular, into society <laughs> without first telling people that he's a registered sex offender. Uh, Jeff Varner is not coming back to television uh, at any point anytime no. soon. Uh, he is not a friend of the um, trans community. And Elizabeth, no, Elizabeth Hasselbeck would be welcome back into one part of society. <laughs> Uh, but only one half of society and the other half of society hates her. So yeah. let's just give little Elizabeth here. Here, look, it's appropriate that I colored her red. All the red states love Elizabeth. It's just a real shame. It, she just took a real 180, but what are you going to do? There's also no amount of money that would get Elizabeth Hasselbeck back from the survivor. No, you're absolutely right. There's no amount of money, but 
Mark my words, by the time the 50th season rolls around and the show ends, which it's got to end at season 50, you're going to see either Colby or Jerry coming back again. Okay. I, I'd like to see, uh, I'd like to see the uh, fourth iteration of Colby. Why not? Yeah. Sure. I, I love watching these people age throughout the years. I mean, you, know, you see Amber. Amber has about as much personality in Winners at War as she does in in her original season. And, you know, she seems like a perfectly nice person. She just doesn't have a lot uh, that's really compelling to offer this season. But she gets brought back on All Stars because she's kind of a babe and she ends up winning because people hate Rob. Or at least, look, those are her words, not mine. Right. Her words, not mine. So I would say Amber. I would say in Amber, this is not really her defense, but Amber is she not the ultimate girl next door in terms of what you like? Imagine them looking like, and like yeah, the personality of one. Yeah, sure. Look, she did a great profile in Stuff Magazine. <laughs> I used to read Stuff Magazine and <laughs> really? FHM and uh, what did uh, you Maxim. read? What are you reading in Stuff Magazine? I, it was for the articles. <laughs> There's no way they have it. What article do they have? No, well, stuff was actually stuff was actually the dumbest of those three magazines, and they were all stupid magazines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of those magazines at that time, that yeah. was the lowest grade, and that's where you find Amber right. as a cover girl. FHM was the most highbrow, and then stuff was the lowest brow. And what was the middle one? Um, uh, Maxim. Oh yeah, I remember having issues of Maxim magazine. <laughs> right. So many cheesecake photos. Right. Yeah, I can't think of, that's probably, I bet you Denise Richards was on Maxim Magazine at oh, some point. Oh, she was on all three of those covers. What do you think, Terry Hatcher would have made it on there? Doesn't seem like a Terry Hatcher thing to do, but probably. Huh. Everyone huh. everyone did those magazines. Those magazines were huge for about a five-year period, maybe a three-year period, I don't remember. Hmm. I'd look it up, but I can't seem to access my internet right now because of all the, uh, the uh, writing that I'm doing on the screens here. So... Not going to do that. I'm going right. to jump back into, where did my cast photo go? No, there it is. All I know is when I moved out when I was 21 of my place I shared with McLean, I had about six boxes of Maxim stuff in FHM magazine. They produced that many issues? So many issues. So much wasted money and hours. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess I had a few. I'm not going to say that I didn't. Um, you know who I bet I can guarantee was on the cover of Maxim magazine was Yasmin Bleeth. Oh, every Baywatch star was on the uh, Maxim magazine. Absolutely. Gina Lee Nolan was for sure <laughs> on FHM magazine. All right. Uh, that's all I got to say about Australian Epic. I like it. I would never, ever. Mm, I'd watch it again if I was like a shut in. <laughs> I don't think you can get through it. To be honest, it's so slow. I don't think you can get through it. And you know what's coming. Yeah, and I probably just lament Elizabeth Filarski and like what happened to her. And I probably think about that so much. It probably right. drives me nuts. So, nah, I think I might watch it just for like a historical, um, you know, a little bit of a throwback. Keep but, the fast forward button handy. There you go. All right, so that's it for those guys. Um, you give you that was number fourteen for me. Number right. nineteen for you. You give me number fourteen. Let's see where we're at. My number fourteen, and I think we're talking about it because I think this was much lower for you. Is Caramo and fans versus favorites too? Yeah. So I had it way down there. Okay. So care, and I love a returning season. Mm-hmm. So there's Caramo and uh, it's fans versus favorites too. Correct. What season is this? Twenty. 26. Six. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll go find the cast photo for the folks at home. The uh, sure. Survivor Karamoan cast photo. I don't know if this is a great cast. Oh, it's kind of a shit cast photo, but what are you going to do? Okay. So go ahead. Tell us about uh, Survivor Karamoan. Okay. I think Karamoan is the best bad season of Survivor ever. Hmm. And sometimes sometimes okay. you can have really good TV based mm-hmm. off of really bad gameplay. And there's a lot right. of really bad gameplay here. Yeah. There's all- there's also a lot of like it's this whole season kind of sticks out in my mind. Like I really remember a lot of this hmm. season. Um, we have hmm. the three amigos tribal council uh, where Philip Shepard ends up going home. We have the hold up bro. Um, that's one amigo. That's two amigos, <laughs> and that's amigo three. <laughs> yeah, Reynolds. Yeah, Reynolds. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, okay, I so. Think it, yeah, we had the Three Amigos Tribal Council, which was such a couple. I mean, to me, that's just they, that Tribal Council is terrible gameplay. Yes, that's the terrible point of that. Malcolm has a bunch of idols, and he's like, "I'm going to give it to these idiots." Like, no, what? Why would right. you? What? Why would you say Reynolds? 
Yeah, why don't we just keep those idols and hope that the game changes a little bit? And you can, you know, maybe you get an immunity to an immunity challenge. Maybe, and maybe there's a fracture have... in the tribe, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, so, so this is fans versus favorites uh, too, right? Right. Right, okay. And uh, let me guess which the fans are. Fan, 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 fan. Who the fudge? Fan, fan, fan. Oh, it's all this side. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this is the most forgettable like crew ever. You don't remember uh, none of these people except for maybe Sherry factors from the end of the game. And that's Zero the of these fans have returned. Yeah, you'll never see these people ever again. No chance. Even the returnees are a mixed bag. I'll say yay to Malcolm, yay to Cochran, um, yay to Andrea, yay to Philip, she yay to Philip Shepard. And yeah. everyone else uh, is meh, and then Brandon Hance is what the fuck. Corinne, come on, Corinne's Oh, Corinne is Corinne is a yeah too. Come on, Corinne's a yeah for sure. A yeah Francesca, for sure. question mark. Eric Reichenbach, you look. What? The reason question they bring mark. him back is because he's an original fan from mm -hmm. the original fans versus favorites. Right. And he doesn't add a lot to the show. Don Meehan, I don't know. Yeah. This is a real. Question. Yeah, that's, that's a real question mark. Right. Brenda Lowe, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Right. Low really turns out to be a bit of a zero on this show. A bit of a zero. It's such yeah. a, a vehicle, like uh, a star-making vehicle for Cochran, though. And he is really funny and witty and a great narrator for this season. The only way this season is remotely tolerable is because he wins. And he actually makes it, a, his win makes it, I think, a fun season. What is more entertaining, watching Survivor Karamoan or just having 13 episodes where Cochran does funny things. He goes out, into, <laughs> out on the town and he does comedians and cars getting coffee with Cochran. Comedian <laughs> cars getting Cochran is what I would like to see. I, I think that, no, I think, I think you need the survivor here. I think this kind of completes his arc. He goes from this complete fish out of the water outcast mm -hmm. to a person who effectively runs the game. Now, mm -hmm. I, don't know if, I don't know if production just set this up for him to knock out of the park. They like them this much. I don't know how much producer involvement there was, but uh, I could never have predicted this guy would, would win the season. Yeah, I just feel like, say these people are all not on the show. <laughs> right. Right? Why don't right. we just have half a season with just these people? Because I don't care at all. Mm. And it, it just goes on to cement how terrible it is to have returning players play with inexperienced noobs. These people get crushed. They get crushed in every possible way. I, I, yeah, who is the longest there? Sherry Beathman or something like that? Yeah, she's right. No one cares, cares about Sherry. But I will, yeah. I will say this. I know a season that you and I are both going to rank higher is the original fans versus favorites. Sure. And that is also a decimation of, of um, the fans. But it's, a, it's still like a, a, a very highly rated season. Um, doesn't, don't those make for good TV sometimes, if not... Um, I think when you have memorable fans, and I think on that one, at least you had a couple more. Like, I remember yeah. the fans a lot better on that one than I do from, I don't know, Ali Pohovitz. Yeah, I, I, right. I don't know. I couldn't pick her out of, you know, the whatever survivor bimbo lineup. Um, <laughs> I'm sure she's a really intelligent, nice person, but I don't know who the hell that is. So I was excited to see the majority of the returnees. Even when you bring, so you bring back Francesqua here. Mm -hmm. You know, and I feel bad because she's paired up um, with Philip, so she doesn't have, a, you know, a chance. And, and, and I do think it's interesting that they were like, okay, let's bring back a first boot. They'd never done that before. So that gives hope to almost anyone who's ever been on the show. Anyone who's ever been on the show is like, oh, they brought Francesca back? Well, there's hope for me. There's not hope for you, um, <laughs> you know, Chet or whomever, but, you know, there's, it was still <laughs> kind of neat to see. But it's, it was garbage that they brought her back with Philip because Philip just has... Philip's gunning for the entire time. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I see the point that you're making. I felt the Brandon Hance thing was so unbelievably hard to watch and so yeah. upsetting that to me that that really um, overshadows a lot of what goes on in this. I he think goes home really early, though. He does. He does. I don't like the reunion show, which is the worst in history, where they put the non-jury members in the audience. Crin is choked. <clears throat> Oh, she's so mad. She's still mad about it. I find that offensive. I don't think it had the best. I think Cochran plays really well, but I do think people just are freaking morons and don't like, they should see this coming a mile away. It's to me, it's evident from 
I don't know, the third episode that Cochran's like, they're really teeing this one up for Cochran to win. Yeah. So I didn't yeah. think it provided a lot of suspense. And I don't know. I mean, I love returning player seasons. I just, yeah, this is way up there for me in a 26 and it's borderline for whether or not I would, I would do a review. I would do it for Cochran, you know, cause I yeah. think he, you're right. He's, well, he's a great winner, but. Uh, I, I think it's fun. I think it's great when Cochran is, is kind of like, are we going to be mean enough to vote out Francesca first uh, off uh, for back-to-back seasons, right? I think that's, I think he has a lot of great little uh, comments throughout this. He makes fun of Julie at one point, uh, calling Ooh. her, up and, oh, it's one of these new people, um, Julia. Um, yeah, all right, Julia Landauer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has, he has a lot of really funny things to say. I do start to question production involvement when Cochran is so easy, uh, easily gliding to the uh, to the finish line of this one, though. I don't know. What did they give him? They gave him a bunch of dummies to play with. I don't know. Does he have idols in this one? I don't remember anything. If you look at this run of win, like a lot of the run of winners, when like Boston Raw wins his season mm. and Tyson wins the season yeah. and and Cochran wins the season and I don't know. Coach almost wins the season. Coach almost wins the season, right? Eh, makes me a little suspicious. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah they're, they're just the mid twenties are just in the early twenties. There's a one or two that sneaks in there that's okay, and there's just like it's a real wasteland. So there's some in the thirties that they pick it up a bit, and they go on a decline. And then I think the forties have started off well, but we'll. I know where you rank that thing. We'll talk about right. where winners at one later on. You got anything else to say about Caramon? Nah, give it a watch. It's a lot of fun. All right. So I'm going to say we should do one more. Yeah, okay. I think, what, do you know how much time we're, we've actually been recording for? Because I didn't. Yeah, an, about an hour and 20 minutes. Oh, that seems fine. Okay, but one more, that's all I can do. That's true, sure. It's late. No, yeah, I hear you. I hear okay, you. cool. No, I mean, really enjoy it. I could keep going, but there's no way anyone's watching this till the end. And no, we'll absolutely. prove it because I will offer to send someone, I don't know, something. A subscription <laughs> to Stuff Magazine. So... <laughs> We're getting into number 13 here. Number 13 mm-hmm. for me. I love this season. This is great. This is when I really went through these today, the, the top 13, and I had a tough time parsing them out. And so this is really where I think it gets interesting. This is the top third. So number 13 for me is Survivor Blood versus Water. Ooh, very nice. What's that, season yeah. 27? Something like that. 27. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So there's Blood versus Water. All right. And then... For my last 13, and we'll talk about this before we uh, sign off, is yep. number 25, The Philippines. Ooh, Survivor Philippines. Okay, I'm glad we're going to talk about this one. That sounds mm-hmm. great. I'm going to find the uh, Philippines. I'd say it took me forever to find the Philippines cast photo here. Yeah, I still don't have the Philippines cast photo. There's something weird that happened to the Philippines cast photo. So, Okay. Well, you know what? I might be able to do it. So All right. let's... Let's see if I can bring up the Philippines cast photo. You talk a, a little bit about the Philippines. I'll see what I can do here. Is that okay. showing up? Is it showing up? Yeah, it's going there. I can see, I can see Malcolm there. Um, it's really small, but I can see it. Is okay, it big there now? We go. Yeah, it's bigger did now. Did I do it? Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, you did. Stuff out. Cool. All right, so okay. there you go. Survivor Philippines, guys. Right. Uh, this has a fantastic cast. I remember almost everybody from this. It has... Mm-hmm. It has three returning players, uh, people who were medically evacuated in, in uh, previous seasons. It has uh, Jonathan Penner from Cook Islands. It has Russell Swan from Samoa. And yep. it has Mike Scoopin from the Australian Outback. Who? Um, <laughs> right, Voldemort. Um, and everything about this, this season is memorable. They divide them into three <laughs> tribes, the lovable yep. losers, um, the jerky villains and the I hate Jonathan Penner club. Um, there, there was in order, Matt Singh, Tandang and Calabar. Right. Um, yep. So many, so many great moments, so many great yep. characters. Mm-hmm. Um, huh, I, I guess a satisfying winner, I think. Um, although a lot of people don't find there's going to be that exciting of a winner. Denise Here's our Stapley. winner, Denise Stapley, who just returned and finished, I want to say, sixth on the most recent season of Survivor. I like Denise a lot. I, I, I love her. I think she's winner. super smart. She's um, very intelligent, yeah. Yeah. She does a great job. She, yeah, she, right, she doesn't have all, like, theatrics. No, she doesn't. She's very but, calm because she's a yep. therapist, so you're just not going to be that animated when you have that, um, you know, uh, absolutely vocation. 
No, absolutely. But she really, re she goes, I think she's the only person in the history to show, of the show to go to every single tribal council. Right. Oh, yeah. She goes absolutely. to every single tribal council and still wins the show. Still wins the show. That is, that's a big time winner right there. That's huge. Absolutely. Big breakout character in Malcolm. Yep. Agreed. I, yep. Everyone loves Malcolm. And this is a guy, this is one of these male model types that I can get behind because uh, there's, there's, there's a real depth and edge to Malcolm that uh, you can't help but root for. Uh, yeah, I'll agree with you there. Oops, did I screw this up? Uh, a little bit. You're drawing on uh, your notes now. No, I can't get rid of my notes. All right, yeah, that's all right. I'll fix this up. All right. Keep talking. Keep talking right. while I fix this mother up. All right, sounds good. I, um, th there's, uh, they did a little bit of stunt casting this in case people caught that. There was uh, Jeff Kent, uh, the ball player, um, if anyone's right. a major league baseball fan. He's actually like a very prom. I think he was an MVP of one season. This is mm -hmm. like a uh, you know, bench warmer. This is a very prominent baseball player. And I think he's pretty good on the show. Um, I don't know if he originated Thanks Obama, uh, but... Um, uh, he might have originated Thanks Obama. He was one of the first people to do a Thanks Obama. There's Jeff Kent right there, former baseball player. One of the better, I will say, professional athletes to ever appear on the show in terms of gameplay. Hello? And um, kind of blended in with people. Yeah, no, he did a great job. Um, yeah. He did a great job on the show. So, yeah, again, well, let's just erase this. <laughs> the other the stunt casting is Blair from The Facts of Life. I was hoping it would be Tubi, but it was Blair we got. Oh, Joe, all day long. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. She was a tough, take no nonsense, nonsense biker broad from the streets. She would have been a better survivor player than Blair. Uh, I think although Blair probably... makes it very far. Uh, yeah, she makes it far. She, maybe she gets one vote. Does she even get a vote? I know that this guy got at least one vote. Right. I think she gets, I think it's, I'm not sure, actually. I think she gets a vote. Uh, I think she's she one does. of the creepiest moments in history when her brother comes out, though, for the yeah. family visit. Yeah. And he's all like, sister. And she's all, brother. And in retrospect, yeah. I think that they did that because he wasn't sure if, if they knew that she was, actually, it makes no sense. I have no idea. I thought you were going to say, in retrospect, I think they were doing it. <laughs> because that's what it sure sounded like on the show it did really that was apart from the greg buis and his sister where rudy's like uh, <laughs> yeah i don't know i think uh they're talking about uh incest over there <laughs> uh, like he actually uses that word on the show there was some weird stuff they were talking about i, I think maybe incest <laughs> <laughs> is that rudy yeah, this Rudy said that about Greg <laughs> okay. on season one, in addition to all his queer... I mean, Rudy just didn't live a life outside of the military, right? So he hadn't right. really been exposed to, at the time, what you would call alternative lifestyles. Sure. Um, so yeah, I agree with you. The vast majority of the uh, people on this tribe are very memorable, with a couple of exceptions. A couple of exceptions, but even like the invisible... like uh, Carter is probably like my most memorable invisible edit ever. <laughs> probably. <laughs> right? I, I guess, I, I don't know. I have a tough time saying anything about Carter. Like, uh, okay, now we know this is Zane Knight. One of the best first boots of all time, mm -hmm. Zane Knight. Um, Angie loves cookies. <laughs> um, there's Malk. Look, Malk is, everyone loves Malk. Russ Meyer is also a fan of Angie. <laughs> Angie makes the all Russ Meyer squad for <laughs> sure. We, should, we could cast an all Russ Meyer squad. I mean, sure. that's just as like a film loving yeah, uh, you know, retrospective, not as anything to do with exploiting anybody. <laughs> uh, we got Pete Bro here, who Pete also Bro. dated Abby Maria for a while. Pete Good Bro. Villains. Good villains. Do you know who Pete Bro is now dating? I have no idea. Michelle Fitzgerald. Wow. Okay. I know, Survivor winner. I would, that's a big step up because Michelle Fitzgerald has a million dollars plus. Abby Maria. <laughs> what kind of currency do they have in Brazil? kind of valueless oh i you know what i'm not even gonna right yeah but he's also so, trading up in terms of personality wise because oh, i don't can't believe he dated abby marie for that abby long. maria was like fun for a season yeah look if we cast a heroes versus villains too you can't tell me abby marie is not no, on she has it. to be on it there's a zero percent chance she's not on that but but you see but i don't really i wouldn't want her there no uh, her shtick's so tired it's tired and she's also kind of She's a character that's uncomfortable to watch at times. She's a bad person. Yeah, she's a bad person. Yeah, I think she's actually a bad person. I think so too. 
Yeah, I remember a lot from this. I was so excited to see, I actually, I was excited to see Russell Squan. I was excited to see Scoopin and I friggin, you know, I love Penner. I'm mean, the biggest the Penner fan. Uh, I love Penner. He's so like great. Like you say, he's the best worst player ever. Best worst player ever is, uh, and I, you know, I didn't coin that phrase, but I, whatever, I'll pretend that I did. He mm-hmm. is terrible at Survivor, but you love watching him narrate the story. You know, maybe a couple things go his way in this and he could have done better. He does play an idol, I think, and saves himself for a bit, but he turns down an opportunity to go with, I want to say, Lisa and Scoop into the end. He's just stupid. He gets like, oh, better think about that. Yeah. They come to approach him and he's like, let me think that one over. And that's that's your death knell in Survivor. It's, how you don't know that by season 25 is kind of beyond me. He should Here. know better, but he has some, he has like some great moments, some great quips. There's one thing he says that's so funny. I don't even know if he intentionally says it, but at one point he goes up to Carter and asks like who they're thinking of voting out. And that's Carter right. Carter again is kind of stunned by this, and he's kind of a he's kind of a dope, and uh, so he kind of spills the beans. He's like, "Uh, it's either uh, Katie or uh, uh, you uh, or yeah, Jonathan." Katie, right? He says it's or, Katie, or, Katie or Penner. Or Penner, <laughs> right? And, and, no, Penner. Penner, no, Penner says, "Well, I'd hate to lose Katie." Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if he does that intentionally, but it's so funny. <laughs> It's just a great moment. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's a shame Penner's not on every season because that wouldn't even bother me if Penner's on like every oh, season. Oh, sure. Uh, I suspect at some point you see like an old man season, maybe you get Penner back, but his wife has some serious health problems. So I don't mm-hmm. think his priority is going on to Survivor, despite the fact that I think he has been asked back once or twice in the interim. Who is this? Is that Artis? That's Artis. Part of yeah, the This is R.C. St. Amour, who won Miss Survivor, but... And she was actually cast on Blood vs. Water, but then evacuated at the last minute because her dad had high blood pressure. Notorious rivalry with Abby Maria, I believe. Uh, they hate one another. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so here's Russ Swan, who almost died. Famously, I think he's come the closest to dying until Beast Mode Cowboy, and then comes back and is one of the worst players of all time. Oh, he's terrible. So Russell Swan's one of the worst players. Yeah. Yeah. This guy just has a really big ego. He wants people to listen to him. I can't understand when they don't want to be bossed around. Yeah, he's all like proselytizing with Jesus and stuff. I just don't need to hear it. I don't need to hear any Jesus stuff out of Russell Swan. And then he calls Jeff Probst. Oh, please, Lord. I mean, Jeff. <laughs> or something like that. Where he calls Jeff Probst the Lord. Uh, I loved it. I think there's fun gameplay in this. And I think the cast is terrific. Good winner. And it does introduce us to Malcolm, who everybody loves. And it gives us... Denise and Abby, you know, some great players that we get to see. Yeah, some characters that we get to see in the future. So, yeah, no, the Philippines is so much fun. I'd love to go and watch it again at some point in the future. I just wish there was some way that you could – what's that thing they do, deep fake, where you could, like, deep fake out somebody else over <laughs> Scoopin's face? Like, right. Just put put Harvey Weinstein on there, and maybe that's a step up. I don't think that's a step up. I think you're mm. making a you're making a lateral move at best. Um. <laughs> I don't know. You got kitty porn, and then you got serial rapist. Serial. Mm, yeah, they're both terrible. All right. Right. Yeah. So, I uh, yeah. This Who is, can we put so, on Louis C.K. Is Louis C.K. A step yeah, up? yeah. He's a he's yeah. a huge step up. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So, so we'll deep fake Louis C.K. on there. <laughs> I will say that Scoop, and this is a big, this is one of the biggest cases of be careful what you wish for. People mm-hmm. were clamoring for this guy to come back since he fell in the fire. Like, oh, we got to see Mike Scoop. It's he true. should get another chance. We got to see. I love Mike Scoop. But remember when he killed the pig? Remember when he fell in the fire? We got to get this guy back. And yep. it turns out he's into kitty porn. Yeah, I mean, you can't really see that coming and you can't blame the producers. He's a weird guy. Mm-hmm. There's no question he's a super weird guy from the get-go. He's weird on the first season. People forget just how weird he was, but he's some militant psycho weirdo. And yeah, over the years, he kind of gains this sort of, I don't know, he um, he claimed many times vocally, publicly, that he was asked back and didn't want to go back or something along those lines, or he turned them down and then finally gets a chance to go back. And I got to admit, like, I was curious because... Mm-hmm of his, you know, um, being voted out. And I think at the po- that point, he w- it, it was the longest span between someone who had, um, between appearances on the show. You had gone from season two to season whatever, this is 25. And since then we've seen, you know, Ethan or whomever and people who have gone longer, longer spans uh, being on the show, Kimmy, et cetera. Um, but 
And so, you know, I thought it was cool. The guy was 50 years old and he was in great shape and he was kind of a bungling idiot. And even friggin' when Abby Maria calls you a moron, <laughs> then there's something going on there. Um, yeah. So, you know, what else can we say about this guy? He's been convicted as a sex offender because he all, not only ran a pyramid scheme, which is why the FBI was in his house, but mm. they found child pornography on his computer. So I'll say it. I don't care. Michael Scoopin sucks. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, he's now, uh, <laughs> he's canceled. For good. So long. See ya, Scoopin. Goodbye. <laughs> get gone. You're done. See ya. <laughs> they could get Crystal Cox to come in and give uh, Michael Scoop a send off. A little eulogy. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, yeah, I loved it. Anything else you want to say about? Yeah, I will say oh, that, just one quick thing about this season. This season came along at a perfect time. It was, they were on a real bad run of Survivor, where I think they had Nicaragua, Redemption Island, um, South Pacific, South Pacific, One World. Um, world. So they were all some of the most detestable seasons until this came along. So yes. this really kind of gave the show a, a much needed shot in the arm at the time. Not yeah, since I agree. Samoa did a did the show need a shot in the arm. Like yeah, this. what are these guys? 25, 26? Twenty five, twenty six, twenty five. Yeah. And then where do you go after that? You go twenty six, and then, Caramoan, then, then you go Caramoan, water. Then you got BV water, and then you got to uh, you know Kagayat, Kagayat. Right. right. Yeah, so you, got so a you nice do have a good run, run after this, yeah. Yeah, and this may actually, yeah, you're right. It may save the show because it was starting to really falter and people were falling off of it. And and I was like, what's going on with this? I was doing the pool during this time and I've been doing the pool for quite a while. <gasps> did I do the pool? No, 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 no. I took some time off the pool. I didn't do it during this one and I came back for Kagayan. That inspired me, I think, to come back. But um, yeah, no, I love this one. I think it's great. And it's sad it's the last time that we've seen Penner, but um, it's not the last time we see, we will see Malcolm play again. I mm-hmm. promise you that for some kind of a legend season. I think we see Abby play again. And I look across the, I think that's probably it. That's it. That's They'd it. get yeah. Jeff Kent back in a heartbeat. Um, RC missed the boat. And mm-hmm. Denise, is, Denise is probably done. I think Denise is done. They're not doing another Winners at War part two. That's never happening again. Yeah. No, you'll never see any, I, outside of who you mentioned, you're not seeing anyone no. return. No, I agree. So that's all I got to say about Philippines. Anything else from you? Nope, I'm good. I think that's it. So I think that's got to conclude part three. It's getting dark out. You can see both of our screens have gotten dark. The, du- the dusk has come. Right. It's come and gone. And now it's late at night. So we're going to wrap this one up. I hope that adding those cast photos in there maybe punched this up a little bit. And I appreciate anyone who has watched thus far. I'm hoping we'll wrap this up in part four. I think we've got 10 or 12 seasons to go through. So I think we just meet up the next time and just blast through the final whatever it is, 10 or so that we've got to discuss. I think there's going to be a lot of crossover there based on what I see so far in the little spreadsheet. Mm, If anyone's watched this far, man, what are you doing with your life? That's great that you're spending this kind of time like this. You could be doing so many other things and you're doing this. And that's a great choice. You'll never regret this. And also next time, stay tuned for next time because we are going to be splicing in the Jenna Lewis triple X video into the corner of the screen. Yeah, just frames, like period. There'll be one frame, it'll flash, but you won't, it'll be subliminal, right? But you'll be so aroused that you're going to stick around for multiple, multiple, multiple more episodes of Sykes' Survivor Talk, parts 10 through 45, <laughs> just to get more of that sweet, gentle. Okay, so way to end on a, a positive note. If anyone's watched this far, and so far nobody has, but if anyone's watched this far, leave a comment, message me, I'll send you a postcard. I'll write you a postcard. Look, I got the pen ready. I got, I got postcards right back here. I got so many that I've never sent. I'll send you a postcard. I don't know what else, how else I can incentivize this. What else do you want me to do? I think that's all you need. I think that's all I need. So look, you want a postcard? Let me know. Okay, that's it from the Sykes brothers. Um, for Sykes' Survivor Talk, I'm Ryan Sykes. And I'm Paul Sykes. And we got nothing else for you. We'll see you next time. See ya.